All right, my buddy Marcus, we are here to do King of the Ring, The Missing Years. The concept of this little project we have here is the King of the Ring pay-per-view ended in 2002. And it's been very spotty from 2002 to modern day in King of the Rings. So there are 15 years that are missing, and we are going to fantasy book a winner for each year. But before we do that, Marcus, how are you doing, my man? Uh, I'm good, man. As we record, the Yankees uh, just beat up on the Mariners, uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. And I mean, it's it's king and now queen of the ring season, um, something that I think uh, wrestling fans of certain age are always nostalgic for. for sure. um, and so we're coming up on that in uh, in real time uh, this weekend. So uh, looking forward to that as well in the in the wrestling world. It's a uh, it's a fun nostalgia trip down memory lane so we kind of just said yeah let's do this little project and see where it lands us but mark it there are 15 years that are missing right so mm -hmm. out of these 15 years how many years do you think we'll end up with the same guy i'm gonna go with six i was my gut told me five so we were very okay. close and we'll see who's over and we'll see who's under all right and, we'll uh, over under at five and a half then perfect there we go so and I gave it like three little categories uh, for King. I gave it a breakout, an establishment, and like a cartoonish type of King. So uh, those are the three Kings that I kind of tagged, the type of King that I would give my fantasy book King. But all right, Marcus, 2003. Are you ready to go, buddy? I'm ready to go. Let's do this. All right. Who do you have for the 2003 King of the Ring? My 2003 King of the Ring winner is somebody who they were trying to push at the time uh especially as they brought in th another mid-card title uh on the smackdown brand with the introduction of the u.s title he doesn't end up getting it but he does become my king of the ring and that is rhino and rhino is going to rule over the smackdown kingdom uh they wanted to give him a little something you could tell in 2003 yeah. he's in there in the mix with big show and, and eddie and those guys on the cusp of the main event scene uh, and i think this could have been something uh to help uh, give Rhino a little something extra uh, to get him to that main event picture. Yeah, I like that. Uh, it's not my pick, but I'm not mad at King Rhino whatsoever. I see the crown fitting nice and perfect with that stringy long hair, and I can see it flying off every gory hit. So I kind of like that. There I, think we go. Lot, I think it would have done a lot for him at the time. Yeah. But my king of the ring in 2003, didn't, this guy didn't really need anything to get him over the hump, but it was more of an establishment king. And that is King Randy Orton. And I am not giving him the crown. I am just giving him the title of King Randy Orton. And I am doing this in the late summer, right before he joins Evolution, right after he did his 94% and all that bullshit once his return from injury. And uh, I just rocket ship him and I, the king is rather forgotten about and it's more establishing him as a rising star up the ranks. So I shed the king gimmick right before he enters evolution full time. I like that. I like that. Uh, he's going to get the intercontinental title that year. I think that yep. the king uh, crown helps legitimize him uh, that much even more. Uh, so I like that. Uh, sure. You want to get us with the uh, 2004? Yep, 2004. I'm going. I'm stealing a gimmick from you, and I'm going to the SmackDown side of things, and I am using it as an establishment slash breakout to a debut superstar. And this king is going to be really, really cool. It is going to be Carlito, King oh, of okay. the Ring, King Carlito. Uh, yeah, he's cool. He would make the gimmick cool, and uh, it, it's a nice little heel establishment type of thing really i don't go super cartoonish but i have like tanks of cartoonish and uh, i think it's a great way to put him right on the map as because he's pretty much the summer is when he debuts and he gets right into a feud with john cena and this 2004 smackdown roster needs some characters really so i think carlito fits perfect and even just add a little more character on character kind of like a hat on a crown pretty much yeah i can see uh the curls uh, not, yep. not too uh, too much unlike mine uh, flowing out from the crown. Uh, we are thinking very similarly here. Um, we're pretty much drafting the same position, but I'm going with a different guy on the SmackDown brand, and I'm going with the reflection of perfection, Mark Jindrak. Ooh, okay. So six He's foot up. five, six foot six, you know, shredded, chiseled, um, yep. but he just needed that little hook of a character, something to get the charisma out of him. Uh, and I think he could have done that pretty well. 
uh, on the SmackDown brand. I can see like Spanky. Well, it's a little too late for Spanky, but I can see like them rehiring Brian Kendrick and them having him be like a court jester, even put throw London in there that, you know, tag him up with some dudes like that. I see, I see that really well. See that clearly. At the time, uh, Teddy Long was managing him. So you could add Teddy Long there too. Okay. Getting in on the act. So uh, we're, we're both on SmackDown there, but we haven't hit the same guy yet, Marcus. But let's go with 2005. Who do you got? 2005, I would say this is probably the first big name for me that's going to get mentioned. I got to go. Captain Charisma. Yep. Possibly the king of charisma, Christian. Uh, we all know his 2005. They really missed the boat with him. Um, yep. And going back and rewatching 2005 and early 06 with War, uh, with Justin here on No Cell, you really see it was kind of a mistake to move both Cena and Batista. Um, they lose that continuity that they have on the roster, and then they just move Christian from Raw over to SmackDown, and he's kind of immediately dead in the water. So I think a King of the Ring crown, whether it's on Raw or SmackDown, would have helped establish him even more and give him, again, a little something extra to get him uh, to feud with Cena or Batista. Not that he has to win the title, but he definitely deserved uh, to work a elongated program on top with either guy. Yep, and this is, you know, ding, ding, ding. This is the first time that we have the same guy in the same year. I went Captain Charisma, King Charisma, whatever you want to call it, Christian. I do it post-WrestleMania, right around the time where he has that vengeance match and gets flipped to SmackDown, like you said. So we're on the same wavelength here, and I just love the name King Charisma. It's just, it's just beautiful. And hey, you never know. He maybe catches a little fire, a crown distracts his ugly face, and uh, Vince maybe pushes them and signs them for a longer deal. So we'll see who knows who, who, who would have known, but uh, I'm going to jump to 2007 Marcus. And while I'm jumping, right. I'm going to jump to the ECW brand spoiler. I jump brands mm. a little bit here, Marcus, and I am going to go with King Chavo Guerrero in the late Ooh. fall. Okay. So he is done with Rey Mysterio around this time. Once Ray returns, he puts Ray over, reestablishes him at SummerSlam, and he finds himself heavily pushed on the ECW brand. At coming off of the my my familia with Edge and Bam Neely and all those guys, I just think King of the Ring fits him perfectly on the ECW brand. And I think that I I kind of go establishment with a lot of cartoonish because that's ECW at this time. And he really does well with this little mini ECW run kind of transitioning the belt to punk. And I just think the King of the ring is a perfect time for him. And I really could see that mid card Chavo character being King of the ring and kind of not really doing what, what it did for Booker, what, what it did for Booker on an ECW scale for Chavo pretty much. Sure. Sure. Um, once again, we are, very close because I also went to the land of extreme uh, and I'm going to crown the king of extreme, Elijah Burke. Oh, I like that so one too. Once the new breed breaks up, they always liked him. They always wanted to have something for him. He could obviously talk. He had a, a great amount of charisma, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, something to give him that hook. We're on the same wavelength there, you know, somebody to work with punk on top on the yep. ECW brand to kind of carry the top of the card. So, but I, I like your idea Chavo a lot more, actually. I mean, I'm gonna give you credit there. I like that one a lot more. Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm not having it be like spring. I'm moving it around to wherever it kind of needs. Cause I want to maximize yeah. my King. I feel like they, a lot of, they like put a little shoe on the wrong foot. A lot of the times once they had it in June and it had to be June and guys weren't ready. So I'm making it very seasonal for when guys are kind of needed. But yeah, it's funny, Marcus. We didn't even talk about moving around brands or whatever. We just went ahead and did it. <laughs> to your well, point earlier about moving it, once the Money in the Bank gets introduced as its own standalone pay-per-view, that kind of takes the place of the King of the yeah. Ring a little bit. So you can really you know, have some more flexibility with moving around the King of the Ring and making it brand specific if you want to. Yeah, it's it's very very it's a very cool idea. All right, to 2008 is William Regal. It's short lived, unfortunately, due to his PED bust. But uh, he was the perfect king. Actually, you're up. You you started us in 2009. All right, 2009. Um, a guy they're gonna flirt with a lot. Uh, as, like as the years same go guy. on. Okay. I'm going Dolph Ziggler. He we steps don't have the same in. Guy. <laughs> okay, he steps in. He's doing uh, a couple pay per views working with Rey Mysterio. Those matches are really good, especially the SummerSlam match uh, that year. 
And I think from then, you, you know, you've got a guy um, and, and you can give him, you know, that that establishment or that breakout uh, sort of king of the ring. Yeah, I have Ziggler a little later in his career, okay. but absolutely. But that establishment, this 2009, 2010 is such a strong transition year that I'm going into the fall of 2009 and I am going with the chosen one, King Drew McIntyre, uh, Vince McMahon, same gimmick, brings him out as the chosen one. But what, as doing so, he announces King of the Ring. He, he announces Drew being the number one seed. And he kind of sets it up for Drew to be the chosen one by defeating lesser and lesser talents. And then, but Drew kind of earns it in the finals against an established star that I didn't really think about yet. But pretty much, uh, Drew knocks down a lot of pins, has the guards up when he's bowling, but hits a strike when it matters to win the game. Pretty for my bowling analogy right there. But yeah, pretty much as soon as he debuts, they announce King of the Ring, and it's a total establishment around the McMahon endorsement. So 2010 was Sheamus in a kind of weird one, right? He really looked really cool, but they didn't really do anything with it. So it's yeah, kind of one of those whatever ones. He's a guy who probably did the most with like the least amount of company effort behind him as king. So yeah. shout out to Sheamus. He, he really made the most of it. And I believe it was the night where the Jets got absolutely walloped by the Patriots on Monday night. The Jets would return the favor a few months later. But I think this was that Monday night game that was pretty ugly. Would they went head to head against that with King of the Ring on a one night raw? I could be mistaken. It was fucking 15 years ago. But I think that that's what it was. Sounds about right. But I'm going to jump to 2011 and lead us here, Marcus. And it is going to be late summer. And it is going to be Hall of Pain season. And it is going to be King Mark Henry. Pretty much uh, a breakout star here. Mark Henry, a journeyman, uh, gaining momentum. And might as well put a crown on that and it, anoint him King of the Ring. And he just literally goes through everyone, squashes the first few people, and really establishes himself as king. Kind of pretty much squashes Orton for the belt a few months after that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm literally just ramping him up as they did but I'm just putting a crown on it. I like that a lot. Uh, I've actually got your guy from a couple years earlier. I've got Drew McIntyre winning it here. Okay. Um, stumbling out of the gates, trying to find his footing, uh, you know, trying to separate himself from the mid card still. And I think the King ring, you know, maybe it doesn't save him, but it is something that they could have used to, to give him something oh, else wow. because they'd already done the intercontinental title a couple times, but. You know, Mark Henry also totally makes sense there in the ramp up to to him squashing Orton for the title. It's, that's funny that we both have the same guys in just different years a few times now. But uh, why don't you lead us off in 2012? Because I, I feel like I have a repeat coming here. <laughs> All right. My, uh, 2012. I'm giving it to a guy who actually got a ton of TV wins and got some organic momentum behind him. And before you knew it, he was thrusted into the main event pitcher uh, kind of on short notice, and they booked themselves into a corner. And maybe if they had the foresight to book a King of the Ring, it would have been a more natural path to get there. And I'm going with the Ryback, King Ryback. <laughs> okay. And I All just right. have him demolish his way through the field. His head's so big and ugly and bald, I, I can't see yeah. the crowd on it. <laughs> I don't think he wears a crown. Like he probably squashes it. Like as soon as he wins it, like he, he, he presses it and he just, you know, he calls a shot. Uh, you know, he, he wants a title shot. Yeah. I dig that. It makes sense, but I'm going Dolph Ziggler here, but I'm doing so. it in like that fall area where he transitions off the Vicky run to AJ. So pretty much maybe he's just like, all right, I'm King of the ring. I'm money in the bank. So he's he's got both of these things pretty much, and now I'm going to get the hot girl. I'm done with you, Vicky Guerrero, and he, you know pretty much the same ordeal, same idea. I just do it when he kind of as he transitions to AJ, he adds Big E as his heater. It's just everything works perfect. Has the scene of feud, everything. Um, so it's just pretty much just adding more luggage to his suitcase at this time. Yeah, that that package of Ziggler with AJ and Biggie and the Money in the Bank, I think you could throw the King of the Ring crown in there as well. 
Uh, I that's probably my favorite era of Ziggler as a character yeah. and his inner oh, work. Yeah. Uh, he's he's on ninety nine during that time. So yeah, love that picture. Yeah, so I just re- the, his peak. I just wanted to add to it pretty much. All right, this low key is my absolute favorite one in twenty thirteen, and I'm glad I'm leading off with it. And it is a fucking tag team, Marcus. Um, oh. <laughs> I am doing a tag team. I am doing the King of Ring, King of the Ring, around Jack Swagger and Cesaro, the Real Americans. Uh, I do it in the summer, and I do like a double pin. I do a double whatever. Zeb Coulter's in the middle, and Zeb Coulter pretty much brings them together after after he you know comes up with Swagger and does his little thing that he does with Swagger at Elimination Chamber into the summer. It loses a lot of heat, but Zeb's still over kind of, right? But Swagger is dissipating, especially after that Del Rio loss. So I have him, like, pin each other and co-win it, but I do like the Sheamus and Cesaro gimmick from the years later. But I put Zeb in the middle, and I make them split the crown, and then they become the real American kings, and that's their tag team. So pretty much the same thing they did, but I just do it that. We might have found our half line because I've got Cesaro winning it <laughs> this year <laughs> and just being the king of swing. <laughs> oh, so, the king of swing. He had the shirt yeah. at this time. He oh, has the shirt. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So Awesome. Awesome. So you still have him in the real Americans and all that jazz. He just, he's just the king of the ring alone. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the real Americans at this time. I'm not going to lie. I, I think they were too. really, yeah. Cool. Yeah, sneaky good body of work. Yeah, for sure. This is our great tag work, perhaps, hands down. All right, so we are at one. We are at one and a half pushes here. If we push <laughs> at five and a half, that's some real bullshit. All right, who do you have for twenty fourteen, Marcus? Twenty fourteen, I've got Tyler Breeze in NXT. Um, we're smoking the same smokes. We're smoking a little bit the okay. same, but not really the same person. But All continue. Right, yeah, he. He fits. He fits kind of that intercontinental champion profile, maybe in the veins of a, of a Bret Hart, of a Shawn Michaels. Uh, there's workhorse type guys. Yep. A Mister Perfect. Uh, you know that that kind of set of guys, and he already has the character that's established. But now they're trying to give him a little something extra, legitimize him. He, you know, is on the smaller size, which NXT yep. was able to, you know, hide that uh, very well. Um, and this might be just something cool to add uh, add, add to his character. I see it. I dig it. Um, I'm going NXT also, Marcus. It's funny that we dipped in the same year, but I'm going with a NXT debuting star, and I do this right after WrestleMania. It's pure comedy. It is Bo Leave. Bo Dallas is my Bo Leave King of the Ring or Bo All Champ, right. Bo King, whatever. I just see him the Bo all the bowl leave bullshit inspiring he's the king just add to it all there simple he wins in horrible ways count outs disqualifications fake pins whatever it's all comedy it's all shtick it's all bullshit pretty much like believe was so i give it to bo dallas on arrival to monday night raw i like it yep so 2015 was king barrett any thoughts on king barrett um what a good team player yeah. <laughs> he a, a good team player uh filled the role fine you know the king of bad news um yeah. another guy who kind of you know tried to make the best of whatever situation he was handed Pro- should definitely should have been above winning king of the ring at the time you know should have yeah. won the title back in uh the 2010 um with the nexus yeah. so um but yeah i got i got nothing but love for king king the king of bad news bad news bear uh what about you yeah, and it's funny that they kind of threw this King gimmick on him to get him off of the bad news because they he was getting so over at it, <laughs> pretty much mm-hmm. is what they did here. But it's it's kind of sad that he would leave the company like six months or so after winning King of the Ring because uh, I always liked him, you know, and I'm glad he's back in the role he is. And I wouldn't mind seeing him return to the ring one day. I think uh, Wade Barrett is cases. So we've been to NXT, we've been to ECW, and we are going to... 205 live marcus oh oh, man and i am going with the king brian kendrick um he is the veteran Uh he is the veteran of the time in 205 live 
He is the star power there. I go with the jacket. I call Ezekiel Jackson or I call a like Ezekiel Jackson and I just put a crown on it. I just think it works. I think it works immensely. And it's a really fun way to establish star power on 205 Live, a brand new brand at the time. We're we're there again. We're there again. Um, I've got Neville winning the okay. King of the Ring on 205 Live. What? So, yeah. <laughs> we did not plan any of this. We were no. blind to the T, Marcus. This is crazy. No. No. Uh, my, my first pick was actually going to be Enzo. And I was like, ah, that I could really see them giving it to, to Neville. Um, he's a guy that they really liked. They wanted 205 Live. They always wanted to. It seemed like his in-ring work spoke for itself. Main event quality uh, in-ring yeah. worker. Uh, it was just a matter of you know getting the character there and getting him there, um, which they they definitely dropped the ball on. But you know, King of the Rings a a fine way to uh, you know try to get there at least. Yeah, I I, I think all three work. I just I would actually kind of go King Neville and have him go like the bastard route in a way. Actually, you know, what I mean, mm. make him like dirty and gritty with as the yeah. king. Really, I think that works. Uh, I I like all three. I actually like Neville the best. Um, right. So that's really funny that. We, we did not plan any of this together, and we went to NXT, we went to ECW, and we went to 205 Live all at the same time. I think that's incredible, Marcus. It's like we planned it, but we really didn't swear swear on the stack of Bibles. <laughs> but I do think that we are going to have the same guy in 2017, actually. So who do you have? Uh, 2017, I've got my years right. I'm going to go with NXT superstar Adam Cole. Baby? Bebe, yeah. I didn't go to NXT, um, but tell us a little about King King Cole. A top guy of top guys in NXT. Um, I believe that's his debut year, right? Yeah, uh, Drew McIntyre, Brooklyn. Okay. So yeah, you know, run it, run the tournament on TV. NXT is having the high profile singles matches. Just excellent quality in ring wise. And this one's probably just like a, a way to, again, kind of going back to the Tyler Breeze route in 2014. Like this might be an undersized guy. You know, we're we're hiding that it's the in ring ability that he has, and now with the product shifted towards that way in yep. 2017, hey, this dude can go in there and and compete with with uh, with wrestlers of all sizes and uh, come out on top. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a really strong pick. I like it, but I was wrong. We did not we did not have the same guy here. I went to SmackDown. I have my King of the Ring right after WrestleMania and right before Backlash. And it is King Jinder Mahal. And we are establishing the backlash. We got to really do our due diligence in our pre-work and establish him as King of the Ring also. Uh, he's jacked up right at Jinder. Let's have him go on a run. Let's let's Baby. have him go on a run and earn those pepperoni nipples and like really establish him in the King of the Ring. Have him actually win matches and wow. uh, just set him up because he, he does an okay job, but they just never set him up. So... I set him up with King of the Ring. I think this is a home run. Yeah, because he, he wins that battle royal kind of out of nowhere. Um, yeah. You know, they heat him up a, a little bit on TV with a couple wins, but uh, he gets that battle royal and then he just kind of gets hot um, and wins the title. So, yeah, King of the Ring is, is you know, another good way to get, get him some more TV wins, you know, higher class opponents and, uh, you know, further legitimize him before he wins the title. And, uh, you know, I will never hinder gender. So. <laughs> Yeah. The real uh, the okay. King Maharaja. Oh my gosh. Oh my we got, gosh. We got the Bollywood the boys at the time and everything, the yes. antics, all that. The red carpet's already there. Come on. That's it's that it's, one is so good. I can't believe they didn't do it. Like, yeah, it, it's I think it's my favorite one behind the real Americans. Um, yeah. but in 2018, I'll kick us off here. And I'm going with like a lifetime achievement award. This guy has won a lot of hardware. He is coming off a strong intercontinental run here. And I am going with the Miz post WrestleMania. And uh, he already has the Miz Tourage. And it just is what it is. It just makes sense. He can go to SmackDown with it like he does. He can stick on Raw with it like he does. It's just pretty much an establishment and a lifetime achievement award and a company guy getting a crown pretty much. Um, King Miz. I can, I can uh, see King that Miz. it's, and it's the only uh, allocate that he's missing uh, much, right? in WWE. Uh, so I can see that. I'm gonna go with Jason Jordan. Oh, 
I like that. Um, again, a chance to showcase, uh, you know, the the second generation genes that he has <laughs> uh, going through a tournament with the, the amateur proud, yep. background. Yeah, do his daddy proud, you know, try to win the King of the Ring. You can even make it a medal instead of a crown. Uh, oh, I love that. And, you know, kind of go the, the Kurt Angle route and you can have the first ever, I believe, uh, father, son, King of the Ring winner. That's a, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I, what sold me the most was making it a medal. <laughs> it's just, that's just perfect. I love it. All right. 2019, we had King Corbin. Uh, kind of is what it is. Uh, he was an okay king at best. Uh, it's just one of his handful of gimmicks. What did you think of King Corbin? Uh, I like that they made it look a little bit different with the the cape and uh, the crowns. You know, they at least. It at least yeah. looked like customized to the dude. It didn't just look like any other year uh, where somebody could, you know, win the standard uh, crown and cape. I'm a, I'm a, like a Baron Corbin stan. So, yeah, the run was a little dry, but. He had some decent matches know. within that tournament. I'm not going to lie. He sure did. He really yeah. did. And he always has pretty solid matches. Um, you know, you might be fatigued from him, but uh, yeah, I got no problem with King Corbin. That shorty G match was fantastic. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So it was really good. All right, Marcus, who'd you have for 2020 in the midst of the pandemic? Building off of the 2019, uh, you know, nearly winning the crown. I'm going with Chad Gable. Oh, okay. Guy they, they flirt with on and off and on and off to this day. Still, they give him a great turn on TV. And then he's kind of still, you know, Pound around and being, you know, whatever with uh, with his crew, the Alpha Academy, you know, they, you know, go with this guy. And he could have went with them as far back as 2020, uh, 2024. We're, we're still kind of flirting with the breakout. I say just go with it in 2020. Let him show a, good guy to a lot of pandemic you know. wrestling. Yeah. And and exactly that. That's a guy that can go out there during the pandemic and give you 20, 25 solid minutes on TV every week. Now, would he be called a short king, Marcus? Ooh, I mean that's a route they could go. It's very popular with the uh, with the kids. So, as they dive into TikTok and other uh, fancy new wave forms of uh, social media, you know, short king <laughs> might be a way <laughs> to go. There, Marcus. Uh, he could I'm turn well king and get sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, twenty twenty in twenty twenty, I am going with Apollo Cruz, King Apollo. Mm. Uh, he pretty much goes with its Nigerian drum character. They actually have trick with him for a few weeks. So I maybe have some gestures with him. I go with the same vibe, the Nigerian King Apollo Cruz. I don't change anything. I just give it more because it kind of felt out of nowhere. The whole Nigerian Prince thing or whatever. Uh, it, it literally came dropped out of nowhere. Why not have him win King of the Ring so there's a little more substance there and perhaps it would last a little bit longer. I go, it's a little bit of establishment. It's a little bit of breakout with a tink of car or cartoonish. I keep that same presentation. I just have him think, I just think him winning King of the Ring helps what he already did. So that's my winner for 2020. I like that. I like that. And maybe if that's the case, you don't have to end the, uh, excuse me, the uh, Intercontinental title reign of Big E a little earlier uh, yeah. in 2021. Or if you do, you know, maybe it's a natural progression to get there because he's been, excuse me, he's been legitimized with, uh, you know, that turn. So I do like that. Yeah, it was one of the easiest ones because the push was already there. The presentation was already there. Just go with it. Uh, what did you yeah. think in 2021? We had King Xavier Woods, our last King of the Ring. What did you think of King Woods? He didn't do enough, but I absolutely loved that you know, he got in the tournament and he won it and he really, really personalized it. And he said, you know, everybody has dreams of becoming world champion. But for me, it was always king of the ring. And he he really made it seem important to him. And he's a guy. He's also he's had all those great tag team matches with the new day. Let's see what he's got as a singles guy. He can more than hang in the ring. He delivers great stuff whenever called upon. I just wish it would have gave him a little bit more runway with it um, and see what he can do. Instead, he kind of falls victim very early to uh, the tribal chief as Roman establishes his dominance on SmackDown. And uh, it kind of extinguishes his flame pretty quickly. 
Yeah, he, it's like Roman was the meme. Every meme that he has is like him crowning himself with Xavier's crown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I don't know. I thought it was fine. I thought it was a nice kind of like lifetime achievement award. The other New Day guys went and won titles. That really wasn't in Xavier Woods' future, so I'm glad they gave him this in a singles capacity. I like Woods. Uh, I like New Day. I think it's pretty cool that they all have single accolades while staying together, too. So, good stuff. Yeah. All right, Marcus, 2022, what do you got? I'm going with a breakout. I'm going with somebody who I feel like every year I see makes around on social media after a Money in the Bank or an Elimination Chamber or Royal Rumble. It's fill in the blank. This is his breakout year. This is his match. This is his moment. I'm going with Montez Ford. Oh, King Ford. Okay. Yeah, I'm, King going, I'm going with King Going with King Tez, uh, let again, let's pull the trigger, let's run with them, let's see what he's got. Um, you don't have to break up the tag team necessarily, but it's one of those situations like with the new day, Dawkins can be like, Hey, you won the tournament, I'm, yep. I'm behind you, I, I got your back, you know, go after the gold, have a good run. Um, and you can still keep the package together, but you can really highlight Montez Ford, um, you know, for that, you know, what four or six months or whatever. Yeah, I, I like that. And then once he gets sick of them, um, perhaps they can have a little friction yeah. if it if it's called on it. But uh, yeah, I he's one that they always flirt with. I really like that one. I'm, I'm, I'm he's any he, I can see him with the crown. King Tez sounds great. You know, what I mean, it's a real it, it's a great breakout candidate for sure. My 2022 king is a guy that saw a lot of bright lights in 2021. 2022 was the peak of his push, and that is King Omos. After this, almost would kind of be a house show act, pretty much. So I think the King of the Ring is a beautiful house show act, and he can defend his crown every night at house shows. So I have King King Omos as a year-long king defending the crown on house shows and making those house shows even more kind of prestigious in a way because he kind of is low-key just a battle royal slash house show guy as is so i would have him be king of the ring all the way till 2023 and have him go in the tournament and defend it for another year but uh any thoughts on almost before we jump to 2023 as your king of the ring i look i love the the coloss that is omas I absolutely. I, I'm a Obo, Obo sapien. Uh, I thought after they split up him and AJ, I thought they should have strapped him up. I thought they should have ran with him. I think when you have somebody that big and that physically imposing, I think it exposes the business when they don't at least like get a crack at the title, if not a short run. How can somebody that big and, and you know, supposed to be that dominant, you know, not pan out to be he's, more he's so literally just hit it on house shows for that exact reason pretty much yeah, they so don't really I know love, yeah i love the idea of give him the king of the ring give him a little bit of something extra to his character give him mm -hmm. some matches with some with some stakes and then when he wins it's also believable because all right he's you know he's the king he's got to retain uh and you're giving him obviously like high quality opponents to work with so he's going to be learning a ton you know whether you're giving him AJ Styles or you're giving him Finn Balor or Chad Gable or Shinsuke Nakamura like whoever those baby faces are he's going to be learning a ton and you still got MVP there too with the presentation was only going to yeah. add to it and I like I said earlier I said it for a reason I make him king for a whole year I make him defend it in the tournament and he loses in the finals to a breakout star in 2023 L a night and la night is your 2023 king of the ring um it's not cartoonish he pretty much it's it's like bret hart style he wears the cape wears the crown once you get the visual and it's pretty much just a resume builder and he has bigger and brighter aspirations than king of the ring but it's a stepping stone for la night all right I, I, obviously i love that i love me some la night i'm gonna go with Dom Mysterio, <laughs> and I'm gonna okay. have him get his win back, uh, beat his dad in the finals, um, and do something right. that his dad never did book a father son finals for King of the Ring. And uh, you know, you could get Rhea Ripley wearing the crown or you know, Mommy. whatever, yep. you know, Mommy wears the crown yeah, only. That's you know. I love it, yeah. So, <laughs> winning the crown for Mommy, that's what I would do for Dom Mysterio. 
Marcus, this was a lot of fun. This is probably one of the most fun things I've done in a while here. I thought it was really fun to put together. I thought it flowed really well. And I'd love to hear everyone else's King of the Rings for the lost years. Absolutely had a great time. And before we get out of here, I want to know who is your favorite King of the Ring? All time favorite King of the Ring? When I think King of the Ring, I think 1993 Breath of Hitman Heart. And uh, I think he is the great way to establish King of the Ring was with Brett. I love that he had three different type of matches. Bam Bam Bigelow, Razor Ramon, and Mr. Perfect. And uh, when I think King of the Ring, I think Bret Hart. How about you? Uh, you could probably you probably count that as our uh, third shared answer for the night because yeah, Brett we were pretty high with five and six. By the way, what what were we saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got we ended up with uh, I guess one and a half. <laughs> what who would have thunk? What, out of the out of the, your whole list, which what is your favorite? Um, I really think Jason Jordan twenty eighteen is probably my favorite pick. Yeah, uh, yeah. my favorite pick is. Is uh probably oof. Uh I really like the Chava one, even though Chavo stinks, but uh I like I like the scenario around it. But I think my favorite one is the real American splitting the crowd. <laughs> that's yeah, it's good stuff. That's really good stuff. Yeah, but I, I like most of my I, I thought like I said, this is a really fun project for us to put together, and I really looking forward to hearing everyone else. Yeah, man, had a blast. All right, Marcus. Well, I'm sure we'll do something again soon, and uh we'll catch you on the next one, buddy. See ya.